Hi, today we're going to start a series called Easy Engineering to help explain some of uh, our specialized compressed air technology used for blow-off, cooling, moving, and all sorts of special applications. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the Vortex tube. Um, this in itself, there will be a few videos uh, explaining this, how to use it, some of, some of the uh, special things about them. Uh, today we're just going to show you the parts that make up a Vortex tube. And basically there's about seven parts that you need to know about. First of all, you have the Vortex tube body. The way a Vortex tube works, for those who don't know what a Vortex tube is, is it takes compressed air, spins the compressed air one way, spins it back inside itself, producing a stream of hot air and an extreme of cold air, all with no moving parts. So it includes a body. Into that body goes a generator. Now take a look at the generator really closely. You'll see that there's slots in it. This is what causes the compressed air to spin. So the generator is inserted like this. The compressed air is spinning. It spins one way. At the other end, it hits a valve, which, uh, which uh, changes the direction of that spinning air, and it spins back inside itself, back to the other direction, and comes out at the cold end. Okay, so this is the hot end. Hot end air comes out here. The valve can be adjusted. Uh, there's two types of valve. Uh, you can either have it adjusted with a screwdriver. Uh, this way you get some security in a factory operation where somebody can't go around adjusting it all the time because you need a screwdriver. Or you can have a, a convenient hand adjustable end to control the amount of compressed air that comes out at that end. And you can also have a hot end muffler to reduce the noise at that end. As the cold air comes out this way as well, it can get very noisy. So if you're not pumping that cold air into an enclosure or you're in an environment that's already very noisy, it's a good idea to have a cold end muffler, which goes at the end. The muffler will have some sort of a sound reducing material. Good idea to have a metal sleeve to protect that sound reducing material, otherwise it could eventually get pushed out. Um, our mufflers, of course, have that sleeve to protect that from happening. So, basically the parts of the vortex tube are the vortex tube body. Uh, you also have a sleeve occasionally put inside the vortex tube body. The sleeve kind of controls uh, the inside the amateur a little bit of that hot area of that hot end tube where the air is spinning. If the capacity is very low, you want to have that more narrow on the inside. So sometimes you'll see a sleeve on the inside, uh, but not in all capacities. You don't always need it. But so you have the body, then you have of course the generator as well after the sleeve, the generator that does all the spinning in the air. You have the hot end valve to control the air coming out at that end of the vortex tube to control the flow and the temperature that goes in the vortex tube, which we'll explain in the next video. Then you have the cold end muffler to reduce the noise. You have a hot end muffler to reduce the noise at the hot end. And you have an uh, optional adjustable knob to be able to make it more easily to adjust. So those are the parts of the vortex tube. Uh, the next training video uh, under easy engineering will show you a little bit more about how the vortex is adjusted and how it works.